They're the Kambini boys. They're the Kambini boys. They're the Kambini. They're the Kambini. They're the Kambini. They're the Kambini boys. Hey, Mike. Hey, Matt. How are you doing over there? Doing well. Uh, Thanksgiving coming up on Thursday, so uh, getting ready to see nobody and eat maybe a pizza. Domino's mix and match is what I'm thinking. <laughs> How are things in Kanazawa? Yeah, things are doing good. Everything. Oh my god. Hold on. All right. Now we're gonna do it live. Now we're doing it live. All right. Got out the jitters. Hey, Matt. It's just us hanging out and talking. You know. We have a huge audience now, but it's just you and me shooting the breeze. That's not a real term. Shooting the breeze. Shooting the breeze is a real term. Is it? I think so. All right, here we go. Three, two, one. Hey, Matt, how is it? Uh, how are you doing on your fine day? <laughs> All right, you gotta you gotta count it down. That's the way we All always right. do it. That's the rhythm we got. Three, <clears throat> two, one. Hey, Mike. Hey, Matt. How's it going? It's going okay. You got uh, Thanksgiving coming up this week on Thursday. Uh, no plan to host any kind of super spreader mm -hmm. event. Just hanging out. Probably going to pick up the Domino's mix and match deal. How about you? How are things in Kanazawa? Yeah, you know, not much uh, going on in terms of Thanksgiving over here. Uh, yeah, it was a good week. We um, we went up to uh, the Noto to stay in a cabin with some friends this week. Oh, nice. Um, yeah, so that was really nice. And uh, yeah, things are good. It's getting a it's actually it's staying pretty warm over here, to be honest. Mm. Um, uh, but, uh, yeah, man, I mean, I will say you, you look really, really good this week. I don't know what it is, but you're looking damn good. Thank you. Yeah. I'm trying to keep in shape here. So yeah, <laughs> trying to work on my figure a little bit, lose a few pounds. Yeah. So maybe you. that's, maybe that's what it is. I'm not sure, but, um, all right, Matt. Well, Hey, you know what this is? This is episode 30 boy yeah wow um, who would have thought who would have thought you know nobody ever thought we were going to make it to 10 it's a drip in the water make it to 20 it's you know two drips in the ocean three and it's 30 and it's a uh <laughs> and it's a damn ocean we're in a damn ocean right now i mean this is uh this is quite a run we've been having and i'm pretty pumped up i gotta tell you me too. Uh, and as usual, Mike, we have a lot to talk about this week. So uh, what do you say we hop right into it? Yes, please. Let's do it. All right, Mike. So as usual, we're kicking off with the Chicky Wars here. And mm -hmm. this week, we got four Chickies to talk wow. about. So a lot on the agenda. And we're going to start off here out of Family Mart. We got the Ooh. big, spicy Chicky. Wow. Family Mart is claiming this is 1.5 times the weight of their normal chicky, of course, also with the spicy flavor. Mike, this isn't the first time that we've <laughs> seen a big chicky out of Family Mart, but uh, I don't know. What's your take on, on this first chicky of the week here? Yeah, um, we've talked about a lot. Spicy chicken, one of the classics, along with the Family Chicky. Uh, um, yeah, and, you know, I was a little disappointed with the you know, 1.5 times size of the family chicky, but, um, you know, I'm, I'm not the biggest, you know, spicy chicken fan. So this doesn't get me too excited, but, um, you know, 184 yen, not a bad price for a big old lunk of chicky. That's what my reaction was too. I'm not a huge fan of the spicy chicky and, uh, you know, big is kind of boring for me. So, um, mm -hmm. you know, not the most exciting thing out this week on the cheeky front. So I'm tempted to move on here. This one okay. also Ooh. out of family, Mark, Mark Mike, this Ooh. is the fried chicken breast. This is the tempura fried mm -hmm. chicken breast. Um, mm -hmm. The description translated 
from Japanese to English <laughs> reads an appetizing chicken tempura with aroma of soy sauce, ginger, and garlic. I used a soft breast meat with a moist finish. Um, gosh, I don't know who's writing that copy, but it is striking. <laughs> Very interesting use of I there. Yeah. Um, yeah. <laughs> Mike, I got to tell you, uh, this sounded good, but looking at it, it doesn't look very good at all. It looks kind of like a dried out, jagged, shaggy piece of chicken. Mm -hmm. This looks mm -hmm. like something I would use to trick my cat from waiting by the door so I could walk outside, you know, <laughs> keep it in the drawer, let it go stale, pull it out when I need it. So yeah. I'd say another... Another loser here from Family Mart on the chicky front. Yeah, I was also excited about this. You know, Torty 10 um, uh, tempura chicken is something I actually really do like when it's done well. It's really, um, you know, tempura is just lightly uh, breaded, uh, like flash fried um, um, mm. <clears throat> fried foods uh, in Japan. But um, yeah, I was excited as well. This doesn't look like what I would hope it would be. Like you said, it, it, to me, it almost looks like a chicken tender, you know, uh, mm, you know, yeah. nothing really exciting. So, um, yeah, I don't know. Let's see. I, I'm hoping we got a bunch of chickies this week. So hopefully one of these is uh, exciting. Yeah, we got to find a winner here. Let's see if somebody can throw a strike. Hey, here we have. Hey, the, hey, uh, hey, over hey. To, over to 7-Eleven here. We got the Nana Chicky Bone in. Mike, and as you said last week, it's Christmas time, and come <laughs> Christmas time, that means bone-in chicken, and 7-Eleven mm -hmm. is now getting into the Christmas spirit with their bone-in not a chicky. Damn, I gotta say, this looks pretty damn good, Mike. Yeah, yeah, we're fans of the Nana Chicky. Like we, we had that. Uh, you know, one of the first things we did, we had the taste test of the various chickies and Nana Chicky. We were super surprised with, and. Like, yeah, exactly. I think we're going to be seeing lots of bones here until the end of the year, because that's like exactly like you said, there's nothing that says the end of the year, New Year's Christmas, then some bones on a chicken. And um, yeah, man, I, you know, love the Nana Chicky. I imagine this is great. I actually really want to get in and get get this one. So um, last two, not so excited. This one, definitely excited. Yeah, in 7-Eleven, you know, they've got another uh oh. Bone in oh, chicky here, Mike. Boy. And this is the char broiled chicken leg. So this isn't just yeah. a, ch a drumstick. This is the full leg. So you got the Ooh. drumstick attached to Ooh. the to the thigh there. And this mm. thing is char broiled. Um, mm. What's your reaction to this one, Mike? Yeah, uh, 410 yen. So this is a beastly boy here. This is a this big is boy a, here. This is a big boy. I don't know if this picture's, you know, doing it justice. Who knows? This is maybe, a, I'm guessing maybe a foot or two, you know, <laughs> long. This is a Viking style drumstick and chicken. <laughs> I'm not sure. I, I don't, I don't know, to be honest. The picture, <laughs> let's be honest, not great, but... <laughs> I do. I gotta be honest. This is this is this is tempting me, right? I'm getting I'm starting to get a little saliva coming out of my uh, my mouth here. This actually looks pretty good to me. I don't know. What 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 do you think? Initial reaction looks good, but like you're saying, Mike, the image isn't so hot. I was kind of thinking. Uh, it looks a little bit like Rudy Giuliani's face, sort of half cooked, <laughs> simultaneously taut yet uh, some decidedly wrinkly skin and then it's <laughs> got uh it's got some kind of hair dye dripping down on the left side there you can see that the char <laughs> is definitely running down the one side of that chicky other side not nearly as well cooked so i think they could have done a better job of presenting <laughs> this item i think a char broiled chicken leg it sounds fantastic yeah i don't necessarily like what they did uh photographing again their 7-eleven continues to struggle uh photographing their own products and controlled spaces <laughs> for marketing purposes so hopefully they'll they'll acquire that skill soon yeah yeah no definitely um 7-eleven they really need to get it together i mean they have tons of resources and you know it, it looks like they just they get one shot you know they're on a one shot 
they get it out, they tow it out, take one shot, boom, we're done. Let's move on to the next. To be fair, you know, they're they're cataloging, you know, thousands of thousands. You know, items a year. Or so Well maybe they're they got a they have a Google Drive space, they don't want to upgrade to the premium account. So they're <laughs> they don't want to they don't want to keep adding photos. Maybe that's yeah. what the issue is, something like that. All right, Mike, that takes care of the Chicky Wars this week. It was mm-hmm. super busy. Uh, and yeah. now I think it's uh, on to the scoreboard. What do we got for that this week? Yes, that is right, Matt. We're moving on the scoreboard. This week we have, uh, you know, uh, nothing too exciting. I'll give you the numbers. Um, we got Family Mart with 53 items, Lawson with 34 items, 7 Eleven with 103 items. Anything that sticks out to you there? No, everybody's playing right in their wheelhouse. Uh, yeah. So no, this is just uh, steady as she goes here. Yeah, this is a, we got a standard week here. And I think this is a little bit of a calm before the storm, you know, winter season coming up. And, or I mean, pretty much already started. And so I think we're going to be seeing these numbers go up here in the next couple of weeks, but but we'll have to see. But um, as always, when we look at the scoreboard, we also take a look at some of the items that we picked up. And uh, this week we're going with the uh, the classic winners and losers format. So um, Matt, I thought we'd just go ahead and uh, go and look at our winners and losers. Um, mm-hmm. I think this week we'll start with me. So let me show you my loser for the week. Here we go, Matt. This is the Mitsuba Iri Katsu Toji Sando. So, you know, the title doesn't really matter. Basically, the ingredients, as you can see, we've got egg, and that is mm. wrapping a fried pork cutlet. Mm. And then on the outside, you've got the Mitsuba, which is a leafy vegetable, um, really common in Japan. Um, Matt, you know, I... I'm not a fan of these multi-dimensional sandwiches. I we've talked about this before when we looked at the the Okinawa. What was the, what was that thing in Okinawa? There was some, you know, there was yeah, some it was like a fr- fried tofu inside of a spam inside of a onigiri or something. <laughs> yeah, yeah, right. This this made me think of that. You know, individually, I love all these ingredients. We got the uh, you know we got the egg, love it. We got the uh, the the katsu, love it. Mitsuba, hey, you don't have a problem with it. But all together, this is looking some sort of alien dish here. I don't know what's going on. I I can sort of imagine what it tastes like, but for me, I just say you know, like no need to combine and you know morph so many ingredients together. It's just not doing I any of them justice. Uh, well, Mike, I. Well, I respect your opinion. Uh, maybe the, for, for the first time, I may have to disagree with you here. I'm, I actually Whoa. find this to be a pretty compelling item. And I'll tell you what, I agree. This is not something I'd pick up for lunch, but I'll tell you what. If I'm two tall boys and, and I'm walking into the kombini, that thing's probably looking pretty damn good. You got that <laughs> dashi egg wrapping up. And that sleeping blanket, that crispy tonkatsu, and then you got that crustless bread. I got to tell you, I think that'd be a pretty damn good item around, uh, you know, midnight. Mm -hmm. Wash it down with another tall boy. Fair enough. Yeah. And actually, you know what? When I was looking, taking a look at second look at this while you were talking, you know what this almost is? It's almost a katsudon wrapped a, into oh, a sandwich it's, it's a katsudon inside of a sandwich that's exactly right, right. Yeah. yeah you got all the ingredients except uh the the onion um katsudon just uh, a famous dish on top of rice with a uh, fried pork cutlet and egg this but, is a um, handheld katsudon handheld katsudon so all right um interesting okay so let's go on to your loser uh here we go boom yeah, Mike, this one's out of Family Mart, and mm. this is an onigiri. Uh, it's uh, also a katsu <laughs> situation here. So what we're looking at here is uh, is a pork katsu onigiri. So it's a, it's a rice ball <laughs> stuffed with uh, pork katsu. But then, then this is pretty interesting here. It's wrapped in nori, but uh, but they've got a they've got another pork katsu just kind of sidled up like it's got its arm around that pork katsu shoulder hugging it in like hey buddy hey buddy come on in here buddy let's hang out 
so it's just it's got two pieces of katsu one inside the rice one just outside mm-hmm. the rice again hugged by that nori and normally i'd say this looks pretty good but i gotta tell you mike um i don't mm-hmm. know if you're familiar with this i do have um e- eosinophilic esophagitis which is a chronic inflammation of the esophagus caused by an allergen and this would really be uh, a death trap for me you know you have the uh, pork katsu you have the sticky white rice there and so for me you know i'd probably uh clock out at about four bites before they ship mm-hmm. me off to the er to uh pull it out of me so <laughs> flavor wise i'm for it but just for my personal health this is no good all right fair enough and um yeah this is uh wow this is an interesting two losers we picked up this week because to be honest yeah looking at this as well and like you said you know in terms of taste this looks pretty damn good to me mm-hmm, um mm-hmm. i love it I love the stacking, the unnecessary stacking. I don't know what you get from that extra stack there. But um, yeah, I can understand with your condition. Of course, this uh, would be a problem. So I can totally understand this being your loser for the week. Um, But uh, yeah, some very interesting katsu uh, losers for us this week. All right, Matt. So let's get into the more sort of go to the winners. Yeah, let's let's go go to to the the winner's circle here. The winner's circle, right. We're at Churchill Downs. We're at the winner's circle. Who's coming in? It's Secretariat. All right, Matt, my um, my first, oh, my winner this week. It's just a classic, you know, everybody, ladies and gentlemen, this is what we call a classic. Mm-hmm. So this is no, you know, groundbreaking item here. What we've got, ladies and gentlemen, fried octopus balls, as many people know, takoyaki. takoyaki. What do we got in here? What are we looking at? Ooh. We got a little sack of dough here. And in the middle of that, we've got some octopus. Mm. And if you're not used Ooh. to, if you're not used to, you know, variety of cuisines, this might scare you, but I got to tell you, it is great. And fantastic. what you get on top of that, fantastic. What you get on top of that, you get some sauce mm-hmm. and you got some bonita flakes. And um, and a little bit of nori, which is some seaweed sprinkled on top. Matt, um, I thought, to be honest, I actually picked this up because I don't think we've talked about takoyaki before on the podcast. Um, it's a uh, classic uh, Kansai dish right up there with okonomiyaki, um, which is the, uh, the cabbage um, pancake style dish. I'm a big fan of takoyaki. And... Um, you know, looking today, I was, you know, picking out my item. I just thought, man, I would love to just mm-hmm. get some of these takoyakis. Mm-hmm. And as you can tell, this is an omori. This is a big boy. This is a big a lot size. Of balls right there. That's a lot of balls. That's a that's a dozen. Usually you're looking at six. So this is a filling one, four sixty two. Not a bad price. And uh, yeah, man, I, I don't know what, what how, how are you? Uh, how, how do you feel about takoyaki? I'm a big fan of takoyaki. I th- it's actually a super fun thing to make at home. Uh, it tastes great. Mm-hmm. My only question is, can they replicate the molten hot temperature? <laughs> that is unique to fresh takoyaki where you bite mm-hmm. into it and your tongue, your gums, your throat all just fused together because Mm -hmm. uh the inside is so hot (laughs) you you actually begin to uh, melt inside but uh, that's my only question can they replicate that uh wonderful experience yeah yeah it's hard to tell extreme pain (laughs) extreme pain and extreme experience yes i've i've had um takoyaki at the community before and it's surprisingly pretty good um, I don't know if they get right up to that temperature that you're looking for that, um, <laughs> oh, three, that... <laughs> 4,000 degrees Celsius that you're right. looking for. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. But, um, uh, yeah. So, uh, new elements are forming inside of takoyaki. <laughs> That's true. They actually Seriously. study it in most physics departments have a takoyaki, uh, gun of some sorts. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, no, it's um, it's one of the hottest things on earth, and uh, <laughs> but yeah, no, love takoyaki. So this is mine for the week. All right, Matt, enough with that. What do you got? Let's All take a look right, at your winner. Mike. This also, this okay. is out of loss. And speaking of classics, Mike, this is spaghetti and meatballs. That's it. That's all this is. It's spaghetti and meatballs. Oh, man. 
And I got to tell you, Mike, Lawson was hitting it out of the park left and right with the items this week, but I don't know what it was. It was just this perfect plate of spaghetti and meatballs. And it's not worth describing because everybody knows what spaghetti and meatballs looks like. It's a big Mm -hmm. bowl of spaghetti with some Mm -hmm. tomato sauce and some meatballs. And I just kept thinking to myself, you know, God, God forbid, but if I do find myself on death row and you know, that day before they strap me down in the electric chair, just give me this big <laughs> bowl of spaghetti and meatballs with a haagen crispy sando, and I'll go out a happy man. It's one of my favorite meals my mom would make as a kid. I actually used to oh. help her make the meatballs, so I was feeling a little nostalgic looking at this nice bowl of spaghetti and meatballs. Mm. So yeah, Mike, it's simple. It's, it's like similar to your takoyaki. There's nothing new, nothing innovative about this. This is just a classic, yeah. great dish mm-hmm, mm-hmm. yeah and uh it's beautiful and you know one of my top three items at the cabini you know it's a uh, meat sauce pasta, meat sauce and, pasta yep. and you know this is just you know sort of in a different form you got the meat and you got the pasta you know the sauce you know separated out i love it i love it so much i'm gonna try and go out and get it this is this is making me just so damn hungry Mm-hmm. Um, and you know, what's just great about the Kombini and just in Japan in general, I think some of our American, you know, viewers or listeners, listeners can't tell, but this is just looks beautiful. And when you buy, it, it's just going to look exactly like this. And, oh, yeah. uh, that's one of the great things about Japan is that, um, yeah, you know, things look as they are advertised. Mm-hmm. Uh, Matt, great pick. Thank you so much. Um, I am so happy to see such a beautiful, delicious looking item. This is a home run. And uh, yeah, I just thank you for your for your great pick. Well, thanks for those kind words, Mike. (laughs) Um, So that that closes out the winners and losers for this week, Mike, and it's on to our main story. And the main story this week (laughs) is something that uh, we've been working on Mike for almost two years it's been a That's long right. time coming That's right. this is That's the right. Kanbini tournament that's right ladies yes. and gentlemen this is the Kanbini tournament now before we kind of get into the, the the heart of the matter let's just give a brief overview of what this is here everybody knows the ncaa mm-hmm. basketball tournament march madness everybody loves it the bracket you fill out your oh bracket. yeah Mm -hmm. What we have here, okay, Mm -hmm. we have 64 Kanbini items broken out into four divisions. We got the hot box division. We got the beverage division. We got the Mm -hmm. meal division, and we got the snack division. Yes. Let me give you an example. Hot box division. What are you going to find in there? Things like the Nikuma, the Fami Chicky. The beverage section, you're going to find your Pakari Sweat. You're going to find your Asahi Super Dry. Mm -hmm. In the snack section, you're going to find your Country Man, your Gadi Gadi Kun. In the meal section, find your meat sauce pasta. Yes. You'll find your makuno uchi bento. Okay, so that's what we're dealing with here. Each of these items is also seeded, 1 through 16, okay? So in the hot box division, what you can imagine, okay? Mm -hmm. Number one. Okay, I'm going to break some news here. Number one, we got fami chiki. Number 16, the fried chikua. Okay, that's Duke versus Holy Cross here, (laughs) ladies and gentlemen. (laughs) <laughs> should expect a blowout. Should expect a blowout. Fanny should expect fried. a blowout. But we don't know what's going to happen. You roll the dice and know. boom. Whoa, Holy Cross, Elite Eight. How did that happen? Fried yeah. Chikua, where are they going? You know? Who knows? There's a Gonzaga in there somewhere, okay? Yeah. What we're going to be doing... Well, anyway, I've been going on a little bit too long here, Mike. I'm fired up. This is a super exciting thing. I mean, what do you got? To, what What are you What are you most excited about? What, what's on your What's in your brain about the Kombini tournament? All right. So I yeah, I agree. You know, like you said, um, this is two years in the making, and it's actually the sort of impetus for us to create this podcast in the first right. place. So I I just want to say off the bat, I'm just <laughs> super excited. We since we started the podcast, we've been talking about. When are we going to do the Kombini tournament? Because it's something that we've put a lot of time into thinking about. <laughs> Tens of hours thinking about over two years. And um, yeah, man, I'm just uh, I'm just so excited because, um, you know, I, I think that uh, I think we could have some amazing results coming out of this uh, this tournament here. Oh, yeah. 
um, you know, we are setting the seeds and this is our own bias and mm -hmm. I should say bias, but we tried to be as objective as possible Absolutely. with a little bit of our own sort of, you know, the things that we love will be seated a little bit higher. But the great thing about March Madness, the great thing about the mini tournament is, like you said, who knows, a number 16 seed can beat a number one seed. It's possible. It might actually happen. So that's uh, that's exciting. Um, but yeah, Matt, um, you know, I've, I've been really excited ever since we first started talking about this to finally get it off the ground. And, uh, yeah, um, I'm, I'm just, uh, really excited. What, uh, so what, what are we looking in terms of like how we're going to roll this thing out? Yeah. So we're going to be conducting this on Twitter. We'll be issuing the matchups as polls. Okay. So on Twitter over the course of the next week, really, you'll expect at least two matchups a day. First round, we got 64 teams in the tourney. We got to whittle that down to 32. So we got mm -hmm. a lot of matches to play that first week. They'll be mm -hmm. going head to head, uh, you know, first seed against the 16 seed, second seed against the 15 seed, so on and so forth across all four divisions. Mm -hmm. And uh, after the close of the week, we'll go from 64 teams to 32. Each week, we'll do another round until mm -hmm. really early mid January. We should have a Kanbini champion. Oh, man. Um, yeah, I, I'm so excited. I, I, I have some, you know, thoughts of what that might be. Maybe I'll hold it off uh, for now. But we took a lot of time sort of like narrowing these items down. And we still have a little bit of work to do. Um, I think we're going to be trying to actually live stream sort of the final, um, the sort of final go through of or, or go over of the, uh, the brackets, right? Yeah, that's right, Mike. Uh, we've seeded only two of the divisions so far. That's the hot box division and the meals division. That means the snacks and the beverage. We got the teams, but we got the items. We just need to rank them one through 16, which mm -hmm. is no small challenge. It took us about 10 hours to do those hot box <laughs> and the meals. So it takes a lot of time to figure this out. We this is actually coming out on Wednesday, but we're going to be doing the live stream on Tuesday. That would, that would have been yesterday. So hopefully we will have, you know, completed mm -hmm. all of the seating um, by, the, oh. by the end of the day on Tuesday. Right, right, right. Which so, is yesterday. Um, which was yesterday when you're hearing this. Yes. So this is, uh, you can just forget about that. But um, hopefully it will have been resolved. Matt, I'm excited. So we're gonna we're gonna do the community tournament, and then we're gonna be each week on the podcast looking at some of the winners and losers, and then looking forward, looking you know what maybe we think are you know the strong or, um, you know what are some interesting battles coming up. Or, so uh, yeah, yeah, man, I'm pumped. Maybe we could just give a quick preview of the hot box division here. Sure, so I'm gonna yeah. throw this up on screen here. I'm just gonna go mm -hmm. through it fairly quickly, but this is the hot box division. Oof. Number one seed, Fammy Chicky. That's going to be a tough fight. I'm going to beat in my book. No doubt. Okay. No doubt. Number two, Nikuman. Whoa. Another big one shot. One of the top. One of the oh, tops. Oh, yeah. We got Duke in Kentucky right there, baby. <laughs> Oden, number three. Who knows how that's going to go? Again, Who knows? Who knows? That could be a stinker. It could be a winner. Number mm -hmm. four, the American dog with that ketchup and mustard technology all wow. over. Wow. Boom. Oh, boy. Five seed, Pizza Man, six seed, Curry Man. Yeah, we got mm. three Mons in the top six. We'll see how that goes. Number yep. seven, Karoke. Number eight, Karage Kun. Ooh, That's boy. a sleeper right there. That is a you sleeper. Be going. Number nine, we got Yakitori. Mm -hmm. Ten, French fries. Now, this is a, that is, uh, that might be a sleeper, I think, actually. French fries, you know? <laughs> We'll have to see how French fries do. I don't know. We're gonna have to. We're gonna have to take a look. I think French fries is going nowhere, but we'll see what happens. Anything can happen. <laughs> Could be a diaper dandy. Crispy spring rolls at eleven. Jumbo wiener at twelve. Ooh. Thirteen. Yeah. We got the hashed potato. Ooh. I Ooh, think now. that could be a sleeper right there. Mm -hmm. Number fourteen. Scune. Mm -hmm. uh, that actually was very appealing to my mom until I told her they're of chicken cartilage embedded in those boys number That's 15 true. the bone-in chicken drumstick and 16 there it is the fried chikua the hot box division ladies and gentlemen 
Oh boy. Yeah. So we're going to, um, we're going to reveal everything online. Um, and, uh, yeah, um, we're really excited. We hope that you'll join in and, uh, you know, as much as possible, leave your votes. Uh, you know, it'll be really a lot more fun if, you know, we have a, a wider sort of array of votes. Um, but, uh, yeah, we hope you all have a good time with it and we're definitely pumped up about it. Pumped up. All right, Mike. So that's, uh, closing out the convenient tournament main story this week now it's mm -hmm. on to my favorite segment that's at the gimbal with mike the gimbal of course the place where the action happens and mike you are where the action happens so what do you got for us this week in terms of item reviews all right matt so last week i went a little bit off the the beaten trap path and i uh, you know threw up some nikamon so now i've got actually a couple items that we have actually reviewed on the uh the podcast so i'm just going to go ahead and show you my first item that i ate this week was i'm sure you remember this guy right here this was oh your pick of the week i think a, a month or so ago that's right this is the garlic pepper chicken cartilage and um matt i gotta tell you so let me just Give you a look. This is what it looks like in the bag. Mm -hmm. This is the bag, Okasan. Well, well, yeah, it is Okasan Shokudo. And it does seem like a big bag, but let me show you what we got. We got oh, oh boy. kind of a, um, oh boy. Mm -hmm. not a great, great look there. And if you're not into chicken cartilage, this probably looks pretty bad. And that's also doing to my terrible photography. But I will say, it was it was great the pepper flavor was really nice and it was a really kind of soft cartilage so you didn't have to like break your teeth trying to get through it nice. uh yeah man I, I think you would have liked it i give it uh let's say maybe 3.5 stars something like that nice uh yeah the photography here you know i don't i don't i mean it does look like a pile of seasoned rocks so uh <laughs> yep don't, don't zoom in too much <laughs> okay yeah. sorry about definitely that, yeah. not the most appetizing looking but hey it's chicken cartilage it's hard to make dress it up nice but uh yeah flavor seasoning looks good so good to hear 3.5 stars yep yeah and then you know one other guy that i had right here oh, sort of the oh. sort of the uh the man of the hour right here <laughs> we're talking about the premium fried chicken from family mart I've had it many a time, but you know, I thought, hey, we Ooh. talked about it. Mm. There was only one left, like we <laughs> talked about last week. Was that the last one of the store, or the last one of the day? We don't know. Um, and hey, it's five out of five stars. It's one of the best. I love it. Um, and uh, yeah, I mean, my only question is, and this is something I want to get your input on, Matt. This is a drumstick, you know, the bone-in chicken. We've seen, they have it. They have the Nana Chicky bone-in chicky. Right. What is it about this that makes it so premium? I, I That's the question I have. Is it, but, is it the 13 kinds of spices and herbs? That might be it. <laughs> I'm not sure. <laughs> it's the price. And, but it, you know, it, it really does have the sort of texture in a lot of ways of the family chicky. Mm. and um but it's nice that you got some cartilage at the top you got some cartilage at the back as well mm. um yeah no it was great um yeah i think it's just a classic item besides the flavor just the you know the sort of excitement of the bone in premium chicken coming out always gets me excited what was the juice level was it a juice bomb well matt let me tell you it um I think you would have been surprised. It was not the juice bomb you would expect. Mm, it was yeah. fairly moist and juicy, but it was no family chick. This is not a family chicky on yeah. a on a bone. I will say that. Yeah. So this is a more natural piece of chicken here. Yeah. It it tastes like a. <laughs> it just tastes like a piece of fried chicken. <laughs> but you know who can go wrong with that. All right. Well, that is some exciting action at the Gimba this week. Um, yep. And now, Mike, uh, wow, two weeks in a row here, we have a Kanbini memory. So after yes. a slow start, seven Very months, slow zero start. memories coming in <laughs> for the second week in a row, we, I 
I think we do have to credit our anonymous caller last week for inspiring our listeners here. Yes, yes. Uh, we have a memory. This one coming from Joe from Ishikawa and a quick shout out to his podcast, Summit to Sea, where he does a podcast with uh, another buddy of his in Kanazawa, uh, which is a fine podcast. Check it out. And strangely, uh, Joe from Kanazawa or Joe from Ishikawa is actually Joe from Corbridge which is the neighboring town of Karen. He actually uh, talks about Hexham, where Karen is from, on his podcast regularly, which That's is crazy. really weird. <laughs> uh, but Joe here has a memory about his first trip to the Kanbini. So what oh. do you say we take a listen? Let's, let's take a listen. Hello, this is Joe from another show. I had arrived in Kushiro, 2005 it was, June, and I made my way over to Sapporo for training. With my new friend Kim, we drank late into the night and ended up by the Toyohira River at 5 a.m. Mm. My first experience of a kombini was 7-Eleven, <laughs> and we had the lovely gyoza, mm, mm. lukewarm, plus the hangover cure of CC Lemon oh, yeah. and Chip Star. <laughs> it was one hell of a baptism. I loved it and I've been hooked ever since. That is my earliest Combini memory. Thank you. Wow, another, <laughs> another, another great memory here, Mike. Uh, yeah, nothing, nothing better than getting hammered by the river with no, the no picnic no yeah this is uh i feel like everyone who's been in japan has become a kombini lover has had this experience and i love the call out to the, the cc lemon he's exactly right you know it's almost similar to uko no chikara i mean in terms of its power of uh somehow completely curing um just removing alcohol from your body uh and uh, no, but uh, oh man, it's also nothing a great like... piece of uh, reflective equipment. So when you're stumbling around drunk, <laughs> much, you light up like a neon sign, it's a bright yellow. You see lemon. <laughs> yeah. So uh, Joe, thanks so much for calling in. I uh, really appreciate it. Hope to hook up with you guys soon. Um, but uh, Matt, you know uh, this. Uh, that does it. It's episode 30. It's done. We made it to our goal. We didn't even know it was our goal, but it was the Kombini tournament. This is the first stop on our sort of uh, goals of uh, the podcast. So I just got to say, man, it's been an amazing time uh, doing this podcast. So, yeah, hopefully we can make it another 30 or 300 more. God willing, this has been the only <laughs> bright spot in 2020 for me, just recording the Convini Boys podcast and so pumped to start out the Convini tournament. What's going to walk out alive I don't know. out of each division and what will be the ultimate Convini champion? Wow, it's going to be some ride. It's going to be some ride right into 2021. We're going to be celebrating. So, uh, all right, Matt, well, um, that wraps us up for the show this week. Uh, I'd just like to say thank you to all the uh, listeners um, and viewers of the show. If you're listening on any of the podcast apps like Apple Podcasts or Spotify, please share and uh, give us a rating. Um, and if you're on YouTube as well, you know, subscribe and give us a like. Uh, it really, you know, helps people to find the show. Um, we're also on the various social networks. We're on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter. Uh, check us out there. All of them are at Kombini Boys. And uh, yeah, um, you know, feel free to uh, subscribe and uh, leave us a like. Um, if you have a Kombini memory, um, until now, actually, we've been saying to call a number. But um, actually, we found out this week that it's easier just to leave the Kombini memory at anchor.fm slash Kombini Boys. Uh, this is actually the home for our uh, podcast, but here it's really simple to leave a message. You just go to our page. There's a little button that says message. Click that and you can just leave a message. Um, Matt, you know, I, I, you know, it's been a great 30 episodes. Can't wait for 30 more. And uh, yeah, I guess for now, I'll see you at the Conveni. I'll see you at the Conveni, Mike. <laughs>